Okay, can everybody hear me? Give me a quick yes, no, we are back. And we'll do our best. And you know what? If there's a few things I still want to address, we might do a little bit. I might do, I might consider doing another 45 minutes uh, later on, you know, during the week or something. Because what I want is you guys get all the stuff I had in mind. Okay, so if you look at the chart right now, can you guys hear me? Well, back. Sound on, everything on. Okay, okay, let me know. Because we're back, back, back. So if you look at the yellow uh, pad here, it's a quick summary, everybody, of the um, quick summary of the uh, stuff we discussed, but well, they're going to discuss more. Uh, the different strategies and the risk uh, management for different stuff. So. We talked a lot about the uh, stocks. I'm not going to repeat that. You use SPXS, that's the best way, or cheap long-term puts. But to me, uh, I prefer SPXS as these years. Now, we are going to talk about sizing again. And after we'll talk about options, predefined amount at risk, uh, puts, uh the size control is very similar to what we've discussed for the tools all you have to do is take the spreadsheet i gave you and someone in the room if you don't mind you 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 send it back to me at market day trading zones uh and and especially if you're a mastery because i miss a lot of email let me know in the room that you send the spreadsheet well so i will give you the spreadsheet you improve the spreadsheet and you do one for the options and one and if you figure one for the futures for the risk and then we'll share it with everybody okay so um very similar now in the futures we're going to discuss a lot of the futures how i flip in the chart from mes es and i do stuff like that that are very important options the same i use a decoy i always use a decoy which is one SPY put. I do not day trade anything but put for options. Uh, sometimes I venture into some uh, zero date to expiration on calls, but it's very rare and with very small amounts of money. Generally speaking, I am very uh, against calls and especially uh, overnight calls, okay? If you don't know why, uh, please refer to one of my YouTube video uh, on the day trading zones channel called uh, uh, options or puts versus call one of those. I will do the job to explain for you. Okay, so let's get going. So when we talk about the risk, there's another thing we didn't talk about today that needs to be clear in your mind. And it's another huge mistake that you will do in your money management. Let's say we go back to the $10,000 capital, one amount, one person at risk, $100. One person at risk per day for your account per day is a different equation than per trade. Because in this instance, you have to not forget, you might do six trades and might have six losers at one percent. So do you lose six percent for the day or do you lose one percent for the day? Do you see what I mean, everybody? That's a different ball game that you need also to count in your assessment of your risk. Because most traders, they go and they're like, oh, okay, I'll do 1% uh, 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 at risk. Well, if you do 1% at risk of your capital at risk, and you are going to trade six times and you have six losers, you are not losing 1% now per day. You are losing 1% per trade. And so you have to be careful here because if your goal is to not lose more than 1% per day, then you have to say to yourself, well, 
if it's per day, how many trades here, you know? How, am I, how many trades am I going to do today? So it comes back to something that is very, 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 very difficult. And even I have a lot of difficulties with that. It's control the numbers of trades you are going to do per day. Does that make sense? That's part of your business plan here. Okay, so I hope you got that because that's a huge mistake people do. And before they know it, that's how you lose 25% per day. Because if you do 25 trades and you lose 25 trades, you lose 25% of your account today. Next, very important. You ask me many times, Mark, why three to one risk ratio? Why three to one risk ratio? Yeah. I told you, you will not make money with one to one risk ratio. So a lot of day traders, scalpers, they go in and they say, I'm going to do one ES point stop for one ES point target. And that never works, right? By the way. So here, look, in this example, you have 60 losses, 40% winners, right? So your win ratio is 40%, which by the way, even 40% win ratio for a beginner trader is high. Beginner trader, these days, guys, you'll be surprised. I have 20 to 33% win ratio, and I still win for the day because I know how to flip size at the right moment. It's like playing poker, pushing size at the right moment for the right trade. And it's part of your money management as well. So here in this 10 trades occurrences, 10 trades, okay? Add a six, four win-loss ratio, which is totally, totally realistic, by the way. This is going to be where you are going to be. Most of you guys in the room are going to be here. You don't know yet, but I know. I have trained enough traders to know that you are going to be in the 30 to 40% win ratio, right? That means with a one-to-one -one risk ratio, you are going to lose money. You're not going to make money in this business. Now, look here. Now we progress and we do two-to-one risk ratio. Two-to-one risk ratio, we say, okay, we are going to risk 1%, right? But with a two-to-one risk ratio, okay? Look here. When you profit, you make $200. When you lose, you lose still the same $100. At the end of the day, you're barely break even with a two to one risk ratio. Same, you are a 40% win ratio type of trader. You are break even. Now look here. Now we go to three to one risk ratio, numbers of win, numbers of loss. You are, let's say at 50-50, now you start improving. 50-50, which is most of my trades from last month, trading future, by the way. I am at about 40-50, right? Three to one risk ratio. Now you become a profitable trader. Do you understand why I want you to always, even in day trading and swing and anything that you do, I want you to look for a minimum of three to one? Do you get it now, everybody? Yes or no? An average trader will not make money if you do not look at your chart. And as we discussed before, it's all visual. You go to your chart. You don't need to be Mark Nicholas for that. You look at your entry here, you know, at the 95 here, 95, yeah. And you look at your risk to reward. Look here, using you can use the trading view tool, uh, risk to reward. That's your risk, that's your reward. Okay. And here we have like about four, four or seven, right? This is very important. What I'm telling you, do not risk if you don't have a minimum to three to one risk reward in your charts. So 
Now you say, oh, Mark, but this is a weekly chart. This is a stock. Okay, well, let's go to a future since you guys are skeptical with that. By the way, I'm just playing with it. We go here. We look at an ES chart. We are going to look at a five minute chart. All right. So we are going to look at an ES chart. And let's say Friday, we open, I want to have something realistic. We open around here, right? So let's do the replay. We open right there. So here's what happened at that moment. We're going to remove for simplicity and clarity, the minor zone. Okay, so we have a, we arrived, ding, ding, 9.30, and the market has been tanking pretty much from 3.30 the previous day at 4,027, all the way to the open of 4,039.80, let's say, okay? So we take about 50 points. I know by experience two things with the tool. I want to look for a short on the ES. It could have been the SPY option. So bear with me, same logic, right? The day trading tells me short of resistance. The long term says it's fighting. So we used to have blue from October to January, February. Now we are sideways, which means we are shifting everywhere and we have more weakness in the market. So I know also the cloud is there. So what am I going to look for everybody coming into Friday? The market, even before the market opens, what am I? This is just at the market open point. So I have all that data in front of me. What am I going to look for? Short, along, doing nothing? What am I going to look for? What is my game plan? Well, I would like to have more than two answers or three. Be engaged because you are not going to learn if you don't have an opinion. You are not going to learn if you are not engaged. Be engaged, believe me. So Mark, short at resistance. Mark C, bad timing entry, short rebound. Fernando, for short. Mark, uh, Mike, short at resistance. You need to be precise, guys. You want to look for a short, but you need to look for a short rebound at resistance because you're already at the edges of the calculator with a 61% chance of a rebound. They're probably going to rebound at one point, right? So we want a short, but we want a short during the day, at one point during the day towards the resistance. That's what we want. We don't want it at the open because at the open, they're already, so look, I play, I play pre X because I don't have a whole day. And then they go, they go down, 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 they go down all the way to the edge of the calculator 100%. So you see, your assumption was right. You want the shot, but you want the shot at resistance, but it never came back at resistance because guess what? The resistance was at 8.25 a.m before the unemployment report. Does that make sense? Yes or no? So in that case, you screwed because either you chase your short here, in that case, what are you supposed to do? This is very important case studies, guys, we are going to do with charts now and, and, and mathematics. What is the charts telling you? If you are going to short and chase that move, what are you going to do? Do it with big size or small size? It's a trick question, by the way. It's a trick question. Are you going to do this trade with a small size or a big size? Logic would be you do it with a small size, 
right? You do it with a small size because when you open here, you were at 81%, I think it was, chance of a rebound. No, 68% chance of a chance of a rebound or something like that. So small size, and you are going to play the chase from the middle of the calculator all the way to the bottom. That's the more professional, cautious way. And then you are going to know to yourself, the process is going to rebound at one point here or here, and I will short later on in the afternoon or when God gives me the alert. So what you're doing is you're clearing your chart, you put an alert, you come here, and you say to yourself, okay, I'll put an alert uh, uh, right there to the edge at uh, 3,392. If it goes back and you are doing something, but it's in replay mode, you cannot put them, but you would put an alert here, around here and wait for the day and go with your day until it, it rings you and, and the alert triggers. So look, guess what happens? They are the edge. Now they are 100% chance of a rebound. You have the volume indicator. Look at the bottom. Completely oversold and it starts turning. So look, look at the little diversion. I'm making new low, but the volume indicator starts turning now. What is it that we expect now? What is it that we expect at the 100% edge touch? What are we expecting? We are going to get a bounce. I don't know how bad the bounce is, but I can tell you on the replay, you'll get the bounce. And what you want to do coming into next week is short that bounce at one point. So I'm looking at place, boom, and now the bounce starts. I got this. Do you see how the volume indicator confirms the bounce? Do you see how we cross, we cross, we test the open line? We hold perfect. So those are the tools. That's become part of your tools mastery, right? So at that point, you could even say to yourself, oh, I could do a little size counter trend. So I, I want to ask, you know, this, I'm going to probe you with real example. If you were doing this counter trend trade, because you know the overall market from the 4,200 has been puking for the past four days, from 4,200 in a week, you know, 41.50 on the SPX to the 4,050. So we drop almost uh, uh, 39.50. So we almost drop 200 points, okay, in the past five days. If you are going to take that long here, what type of size are you looking at? Big size, small size for your account? What are you looking for? Well, if you look at the calculator, you're going counter trend, right? Which is very dangerous. You get counter trend to the long term. What type of size would you have to have here? Tiny. Here you would have tiny sizes or no long. Because the true long comes here. When we break next week above 4,025, 4,050 back up, the longs are coming back, squeezing the market. Unless you prove themselves, the shorts are still in, in, in control of resistance. So let's finish the day, We're playing the day. So it rebounds, it rebounds, it rebounds. Eventually, the higher lows are in place. We have zebra on the cloud, purple, blue, purple, blue. Do you see? So it's all about adjusting the type of size in relationship to what? Number one, to the amount of risk. We discussed that all morning. Number two, the risk to reward ratio. Number three, your power trend box. Try to not go against at least the short-term trend of your power trend box, okay? Now, let's look at that long again. You are 100% here. You have a cross recross. I love those when I look at a head and shoulder, a chart formation. So you have the inverse head and shoulder here coming towards the 100% retest of the uh, indicator. So let's look at the risk reward ratio. Where would you put your stop loss now? 
I want everybody to tell me. Let's say we enter the long ES at 39.53 now. We do the same exercise we did on the stock. Right there. Where is your stop pressure? So look, if I go back to the replay, I'm right there. That would be my sweet spot for re-entry on that shoulder. I still have a 92% chance of probability of success on the long side. I have the higher lows on the volume indicator. I think I have enough element to go long here. Where's my stop loss? Same strategy as we've done before. You need an entry. You need an exit. You need a stop loss. You need a target. Give me everything here, visually, roughly, what would be your entry? 39.55, that's your entry. What's your stop loss? That's your second thing, right away on the chart. Where would you put it? Where would you put the stop loss? 39.40, well, sorry, why 99.40? I would put it one point below the low, low of the head. If it takes the head, it's game over. So 45.50, do we all agree? Let's put it 39.45. One point below the low of the head, minus one point from the low. Are we clear? The low is 46, I do 45. That's my strategy here. Always take the head of the head and then shoulder below the calculator, take the head, that's your stop loss minus one point. If you don't want to do the, the minus one point, just do the head. You know, if they go back to the head, they'll make a new law anyway. Put 46. Now it's nine point stop loss. Do we agree? Yes or no? If the rational nine point stop loss and I have a $8,000 account trading at trade of eight, MES and ES. Question to everybody, should you trade, what should you trade? ES, MES, how many contract? How do you size that? Aha, aha, now we go to the future. So it's, it's, the future is another beast, it's super difficult. Futures are super, super difficult, guys. Why? If someone gives me the answer for why, you are the gold star. Why the future are so difficult compared to the stocks and compared to the, the options, let's say? Why? No, not the news. Why are it so difficult to assess in risk management? Why? Mike, uh, Mike, ping pong, no. Here we go. Mark is coming closer, but it's not completely the answer. Why? Why are so difficult to assess for the risk management side? Why? People trade MES, yes, like they are bonbons, like they are candies, they are ice cream Godiva and they blow up their account in two weeks. Why? Well, I'll tell you why. Let's talk about the risk on the futures. It's very, very, very profound and very important. But before we do that, I want to finish just where I am there. I don't want, I don't want to redo everything. So let's say I have $8,000 account, a trade of eight. I have a nine point stop loss. If I take an ES, one ES, the minimum contract, nine points times $50 a point, that'll be a, a four, a nine, uh, yeah, 400, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but nine, $450 risk. Correct everybody, yes or no? Is 
it's $450 risk acceptable with everything we've discussed today. I have an $8,000 account I'm willing to gamble pretty much 5.5% of my, ankle, my, my account in one trade. If I do 20 like this, now what am I talking 20? Uh, yeah, 20. So if I do 19 trades like this, I blow up my entire account. Is that is that falling into the parameter of risk I gave you? Yes or no? Even if you have a problem sizing future, I gave you some very, very powerful tool earlier on. One of which is what? How many losing trades do I have in front of me with this type of risk here? 19. What did I tell you before that you need a minimum of? Write the number. That will always save you. And you can find a way in a spreadsheet to calculate that and share it with the group. How many times would, do we want to be able to lose before we blow up the account at least? How many times? Not $80. How many times? How many times do we want to be able to blow up the account, the trade? How many, how many trades leeway in consequences of each other do we want to be able to blow up the account, uh, blow up the trade? How many blowing trades? So Mark says 200 trades in futures. You cannot do that because it will be too, too much account. Uh, Charles says 100, 100. Generally speaking, we discussed that we want a minimum of what? 30 to 50 trades in front of us so that the process, the tools, the community that we are in is going to make you right over a process of 30, 50 trades to catch up the, loss, the losers, right? So if I want to be able to make 30 losing trades here, minimum on any year's trades, Consequent in a consecutive fashion, I make this trade, I lost, this trade, I lost, this trade, I lost, before I blow up. I want to be able to have 30 trades to 50 trades in front of me. So let's say 50 trades in front of me. Let's make it easy for everybody in the room. A minimum of 40 trades. That's your minimum. Best is to have 100 to 200, right? But let's say in this future account, you want 40 trades. And, and I just calculated that with $450 at risk with the yes, I'm risking 5.5 and 19 trades before I blow up my account. Is that qualifying for me to trade an ES on this account with the stop loss I'm looking at at the present moment as it happens? Yes or no? Now you're going to say, Mark, oh, but if I have to do all this work, I'm going to miss the trade. That's the point. The point is I'm forcing you to think of it quickly. And as you do more trades and more trades and more trades, you are going to know if you need to go MES or ES. Can you take that ES trade? Yes or no? No, you absolutely cannot have take that MES because it's 19 trades. It's not even a minimum of 40 trades. So question now is, if I want a minimum of 40 trades here, could I do the same trade, nine point loss, which would be $45 loss on MES, but risk four contract, which provides me about $225 risk. Could I do $225 risk? And could this, be 30 times before I blow up my 8K. Roughly, it's about that. Do you see now quickly how you calculate it quickly in another way? It's a different way to calculate quickly how many times it's going to take you to blow up the maximum amount at loss, at, at risk. It's going to be about four MES contracts with a maximum loss of $200, right? And you can do it 30 times before you blow up everything.
Isn't it nice, people? I just gave you another way besides the stock, which was risk, uh, amount at risk divided by the stop loss, right? Amount at risk divided by the stop loss equal equal to maximum equal equals the maximum shares, right? Well, now you can go back to that formula too using your calculator. Look, well here, we enter here, which is 39.55. We want to get out at 39.46 stop loss. So if we do our formula from before, amount at risk from our 8K, how much are we going to risk maximum, everybody? How much? 2%? Yes or no? Is 2%? Seems okay. Yes or no? Divided by the stop loss. So look here quickly. Amount at risk, nine points. Sorry, 2% of $8,000 is $160. Divided by the stop loss of nine points equal the maximum share you would be able to do if it was the stock market. Well, it's not the stock market. That's the problem here. It says 17 shares, 17.77 share. Well, are we doing shares or are we doing something different here? Are we doing share? Yes or no? Give me a quick yes, no. No, we are doing MES contracts and ES contracts. So we have to go back to my rule. How many times can I blow up $160 for 40 times that, right? So you take 40 times 160, so 40 times 160 times 40, oh my God, 160 times 40, equals 6,400. So we are close to the 8,000. So you could, my my analogy of saying you could risk $200 is correct in this example. In this example, it's pretty much correct. You have $8,000 capital for ES and ES account. You are going to risk two to three, two to 2.5%. So $200, let's say, you know that if you do 40 bad trades, you are back at the capital here, 8,000. And now you are going to figure yourself, what is the optimum MES that I can buy or scale in to blow up this, $45. Well, now it's $45 because it's your stop loss. It's your nine points MES. We know it's going to be MES, right? Nine points, forty-five dollars to go to the two hundred. You you probably can risk three to four MES, and that's it. Done. Does that make sense now? Yes or no? That's it. And you need to be quick at this. Do you think I do that every day when I trade? Or do you think I am instinctively a natural machine doing this when I flip from MES, ES, ES, MES, MES, ES, ES, MES? Do you think, like, when you see me trading in the room, do you think I am a machine instinctively knowing by experience the size? Or I take the time to enter it? I don't take the time to enter it. You should. You should for one year, two years, enter it because you need to get a feel for the right size. Does that make sense? I hope it is. It's, I hope it's helpful because we are doing a lot of precious stuff today, guys, that are above and beyond the time that I had allocated for this. And you are lucky my wife is out of town, but I have to catch up with my son at one point here. So if we have to extend, we'll extend. But this is very automatic. So look here. Can everybody see my futures account from TradeOvate from last month? 
the entire month from last month. By the way, so like, let's go through disclosure purposes now. Okay, so this is here to here. So disclosure one, this is for educational purposes. Disclosure number two, my trades will never be your trades because I have 28 years of experience and I have a lot more experience than you. So me showing you that will never infuse in you that you are going to do it. It's for discussion of this risk management class. I want to be clear about that. Trading futures is extremely risky and 95% of the futures traders blow up their account. Okay, are we clear on the disclosure? Yes or no? Now we can discuss. Okay, so let's look at my real trade. You know, I talk a lot, I talk a lot today, but talking is one thing, doing is another, and the reality of my math is another, right? So, you can everybody see the numbers? Yes or no? Because sometimes you guys tell me you don't see the screen. So this is one month of trading. There is 261 trades that have been done. So first and foremost, let's take the calculator, 261 divided by 20 days. Let's do that. Because remember, I told you the less trades you make, the more money you will make. So I made an average of 13 trades per day. Do you see that? Yes or no? Okay, that's the first thing I want you to notice in the risk management. So question to everybody, is 13 trade day trade on the futures per day seems to be a lot to you. Just put yes or no from your experience. Put yes, put no. Charlie say yes to me, for me. Too many trades for me. Yes for Charles, yes for Gutman, Charma. No for Mark. Who else? Everybody should have an opinion. Otherwise you have not been trading in long enough, my friends. Julia, you don't have an opinion? Greg, Fernando, you don't have an opinion? Ronald, Shana, don't you guys have an opinion or what? It's 13 trade, day trades per day, round trip, a lot. Say no. Mark says no. Craig says yes. Okay. So first and foremost, we need as a, as a group, as a community, to establish what a lot of trade is. So look at the top. And, and do you want me to write some of the stuff on the notes? Because those stuff are being lost in the video, right? So then you have to dig them in the video. Do you prefer I write in the notes, guys, for the futures? It's probably better for you. Okay. So let's go to notes. Because this is very important. It is critical that you have the right expectation of the number of minor micro trend in the markets daily for SPY ES. My experience shows three micro trends max, which means if I do two trades per micro trend, then a max trade max of 12 round trip 
trades per day. Enfin, this is gold. Right there, this is gold. You don't understand it. You don't know it. This is worth 20 times what you pay today. You don't know it. I know. So I cannot prove it to you completely, but there's a simple exercise to do. You know what you do? You go to charts. You look at a freaking 10 days, 15 minute chart, no, five minute chart because it's going to be hard. But look, you look on, let's say I put regular trading hours because otherwise it's going to be hard to do. And let's say we go out of here, of the replay. So let's say also I get the volume in, eh, we might need the volume indicator later on to show you some synergy. But, but so we look at regular trading hours. Look on Friday. One, let me take another pen color. One down, two up, three down, four up. How many micro trend did we get that day? How many micro trend did we get that day? Not difficult, huh? I'm speaking French here, right? Four. If I am not perfectly patient in the micro trend and I do two, three trades per micro trend, what should have been the maximum trade that day? Let's say you stare at the screen all day long and that was your job from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. How many trades should you have done that day? Let's go. Your four micro trends for each micro trend are allowed to do no more than two trades. Well, you should have not done more than how many trades, people? Charles, how did you get 16? Your fourth micro trend times two short. You have 16, 16 bullets in your 16 bullets in your gun. Yeah, two exit, two exit, two exit, two, two entry, two entry, two entry. How many entries and exit? Round trip. I'm not counting the entry in two and the exit two right now. Just uh, for, 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 for simplicity of the discussion, round trip, guys. Eight. So do you realize that on a day like this where there was a lot of micro trend? The max number of round trips should have been eight. Is that, is that, do you have another aha moment right now as I speak? Yes or no? Do you have another aha moment, especially if you stop trading like me at 10 30 and you're already at 13? Do you have another aha moment? Does, does the aha moment say, holy shit, I'm over trading? Yes or no? That's what you have to benchmark against. That's what you really need to see. Look here. Another day. The day before. Ding, ding. You found motion break up. Uh, 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 total mastery. One of the four powerful edge form formation I've learned and I refine. One down. One up. That's it. How many micro trend that day, Shana? Everybody, how many? Two micro trend. What should have been the maximum numbers of trade that day? Round trip. Four. So if you count like the system, entry, exit, that would have been eight. Plus, what sucks at trade of eight is this, and it's the same at uh, trade uh, TD Ameritrade, which sucks too, with the 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 options contract. When I enter five, and I exit five contract, how many trade is this? 
I enter five, I exit five. How many trades is this? No, it's two trades. It's I enter and I exit in and out. It's one trade of five contracts, right? It's two trades. I'm going to have a commission here and commission here and I'm done. It's two trades, right? Are we clear? It's not 10 trades. Are we clear? I'm, I'm asking you how many trades I've done here. I get I go, go in 10 a.m. and exit 11 a.m. How many trades? It's one trade. A one trade with entry exit, it's two trades in the platform. But here's what sucks. This is what I don't like with this stuff. When I scale in three trades here, it's one trade. I had two here and I had one here, but let's say, scratch that. Three here, two here. So I have one trade here. I have one trade here. And this is the long side, bear in mind. Now I'm adding one here. That's an, uh, the third trade. I'm adding one here and it's the fourth trade. So it's one, two, three, four trades. They, they ping me, but all I do is really add to the same trade. I'm getting long to the same micro trend. Does that make sense? And now even worse, now I make sitting. So I exit one by one, one here, one here, one here. This one started as one trade. Now they break it into three trade exit. That's what TD Ameritrade does. And that's also how they pin you for the pattern day trading. Do you understand? Yes or no? If you enter a block and you exit one by one, one by one, you screwed. They are going to count it as three trades. Are we clear? Yeah. So it's very difficult to judge how many trades you really have done in one day. So in the grand scheme of things, my 13 day, my 13 trade average round trip in a period of 20 days, it's not bad. Do you understand now? Yes or no? It's not bad because I don't really know if I, I scale in, scale out, how many scale in, how many scale out. So what I want you to focus on in instead, which will be more useful is how many micro trends there is and make sure that you only play two micro trends per day. So it simplified your game plan in terms of risk management. During the day, you try to catch one out of two or two out of two micro trends, meaning you are going to get long or get short at one point during the day. And you know that it's going to take no more than two trades in and out to re-enter. Or you could do that. I enter five contracts here, I exit two here, uh, three here, and Let's say it pulls back here and I'm adding one here. And now I went from five to cell three. So I'm two and I add one more here. And now I'm back at three up to the top. Do you understand there's so many combinations? So what I think is more useful to everybody here in the room is focused in terms of micro trend. Do you see how powerful the class is today? Is that helpful, everybody? Because whether you do SPY options or you do a credit spread or whether you do a stock or whether you do futures and you think about micro trend instead, you reduce the numbers of trades you are going to do anyway, right? That's it. This is why I kind of like credit spread too or, or selling income or stuff deep out of the money. I do a deep out of the money here with a safety of margin between that and the low bar. And then I go to the high bar, I create a safety of margin and I sell the concrete spread at 4,055 to the 4,065 SPX. And everything in between here, the 39, 35, 39, 25, uh, put credit spread and the 4,055 percentage. I don't care, I don't give a shit what happened. I play micro trend and I play stuff with safety of margin too. Usually I like to do those trades on Monday, by the way, right? And then you control what? Size, amount at risk, stop loss or whatever, you know? 
although I don't put stop loss on my credit spread, I use uh, a cash to offset delta risk with uh, long calls, long puts, short puts, long puts, you know, uh, 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 futures, ES, MES, delta. So this is very important what we talked about. So let's add it to your note. Think of how many consecutive trades can I do ideally more than 40 losing trades before I blow up my account. Think in terms of micro trends. Does that make sense, everybody? Powerful stuff we went about, uh, uh, through today. Think about in terms of micro trends, it will extremely help you. You know? So let's continue the conversation. We were here. Let's continue looking at the risk matrix. This is great because trade of eight gives me my uh, futures report every day. And I'm going to show you some other features and I'll tell you what I hate about trade of eight and what is super dangerous about trade of eight. Okay. Now you look here. So we did the number. What is this? This is last week. So I don't care about this one. I care about this one. So look, we look at a lot of trades. And what does that shows me? That shows me that on average, roughly I am at 50, 52% win ratio. Do you see that? Give me a quick yes, no, that's very important. So why is that going to be important? Because look, you have down, you have up, you have down, you have up, you have down, we have up, you have down, you have up. But when you are down here, $2,000, you need to make sure that when you are up, you are going to be three times more than you are down. And in my case, it's about that. It's 3.5 times more than I am down. Do you guys see that? And then it will be reflected here. And this will be reflected how? This reflects the fact that I must have done bigger size, push bigger size when I was right. And that reflects that I had lower size when I was wrong. This also reflects what? My average win is 198 and my average loss is 121. You are like, hey, wait a second. This shows you have about 3.5 times more money when you are right and you are wrong. But guess what? There is a mix of art, my art, my skills that comes in that mix what? Size, right? And frequency of trading. Size and frequency of trading, because look here, I made 261 trades and I had 132 trades right with almost two to one win ratio in the average losing on trades. But because I was able to manipulate size to my advantage and the frequency, the net liquidation value was three times superior to my losses. Do you see how profound this report can be if you know how to read it? Yes or no? All the precious information you derive from this report, Yes or no? I mean, now you, you're learning to read reports, risk management report, the way it's supposed to be read, guys. How is he, how is he able to do $9,000 versus $2,600 in net liquidation value flip? And by the way, it's not even that. If I was at minus two and I went to positive nine, at one point, I did a flip of like $13,000 at one point, right? It's frequency of trades mixed with 
playing poker, pushing the chips with bigger size when I'm right. And that's how you have to see the report. There is a lot of gold in what I just said. Do you realize that? Give me one second. Reflect, write some notes on your yellow pad and your journal. There's a lot of precious thing I just said. Whether it's options, stock, or futures, you have to say to yourself, this guy has one point as press size to return the negative net liquidation value by using the frequency and the trust in his system. Does that make sense? Yes or no? Pro profound. I'll be right back. Now, let's look at a couple of other accounts. By the way, all the principles that I'm giving you right now, as I was checking something, all the principles I'm giving you right now are so powerful, everyone, because they do apply for stocks, they do apply for, for um, uh, options, and they do apply for uh, cryptos too. They do apply for futures. Do you understand that the reports that are, we, we are looking at could totally be a report applied to your uh, uh, options trading? Could totally be a report. I wish we had report like this for our options trading, crypto trading, and stock trading. Do you understand? Yes or no? Because you learn so much from your behavior and how you term situation. So let's look at a couple of other reports. And if you stay and you are patient, as I am giving you more time, I will give you something that is going to blow your mind even more. How you scale the size at no risk. And that's what I do. I scale the size at no risk. So, and that, that, the next part I'm going to show you, sizing the scale at no risk, not only is it worth mastery pricing, it's worth 20 times mastery pricing. I'm telling you, it took me forever to understand that. And when I understand that, boom, everything changed. I make money. I am able to, to reverse a really bad day from there. So let's look at all the others. What do we derive from here? This is one week. I believe it's last week. So what do we derive? No, it's this week. It's a couple of trades of this week, I think. I don't know, whatever week, who cares? uh 19 20 21 22 23 i don't know let's say it's five days of trading so you have your four days your five trades whatever same what's your win ratio well this one is interesting because i'm making 1700 dollars and look my shitty win ratio do you see it it means that I am winning one out of three trades. I have one winner, three losers. Do you guys see that? Yes or no? Yeah, it's not great, but I'm still finishing the week or whatever. It is $1,732. That's the power of what? This is the power of this right there. I am winning three times more money when I win than when I lost. So this is my one hour loss, and I win three hours. Do you see? So mathematically, no matter what, I'm winning. I'm winning three times more than I lose on average trade. Do you see what I mean? Yes or no, everyone? That's it. So I am losing three times out of four. That's not great. Three times out of four the last week or this week or whatever it is. But I'm finishing positive. <laughs> Again, the power of what? Of three things. Risk ratio. Am I, by the way, do you realize that the risk ratio trades and be able to do that? That means that I know how to keep my runners. Yes or no? Do you realize that's what it means? Write it there. 
risk ratio trade means that you can keep runners from support to resistance zones or calculator edges in our calculators. That's all it means. That means you're playing the process. That means the process rewards you. When you go here on the charts, right? And you go here, the process rewards you. That's it. That's all I can tell you. The process rewards you. You went to the edges here, that's the edges of the calculator, right? And you hold until it goes to the next edge. That's how you are being rewarded to have runner sizes of size going from one extreme to the next extreme, close to your edges, your support, your resistance, whatever the extreme is. Same on NVIDIA, you go from one extreme, the red dash is here to the red dash is here. You are being rewarded from 212 to 242. Does that make sense, everybody? Yes or no? That's what the return on investment, the, the risk ratio means. If you are able to see your results on Trade of Eight or your platform, and you see that your average win is two or three times bigger than your average loss, guess what? Yeah, here, yeah, sorry, right? What does that mean? It means that you held, you held. That's, that, that's what it means. You calculate it visually with your eyes, support to resistance on the tools, and you just play the process. And it might mean also that you might have played the process with bigger sizes, because usually when I lose, I lose with MES, and when I win, I win with a combination of ES plus MES, meaning I'm getting bigger. As a matter of fact, my size goes sometimes 10x bigger because my MES, I use one, two, three MES, and then I go ES, which means it's three times to 10 times bigger power as soon as I feel that the, I got the trend right. Does that make sense, everybody? So I have bigger size in the right trend from edge to edge of the trend and the charts, which creates a three to one risk ratio, which creates a positive day, even with a shitty win ratio of 35%. Is that precious feedback, everybody? Do you see how the piece of the puzzle, it's like a, a, a wheel, it's like a wheel that turns, that, it, that is connected. You need to see how every piece is connected with the next one and the next one to create the positive profit for the day. And you need to understand which lever you are going to push. Are you going to push size? Are you going to push support to resistance and be patient? But you need to exercise some lever of either risk to reward ratio or size to return the situation of a negative day or a bad average win ratio. Make sense? This is why I took this example showing you a bad average win ratio and I still turn it. Let's see the next one. This one is even worse. Look at this one. Even worse. 77% of my trade, eight trades out of 10 are shitty. <laughs> Two trends right, and I'm still finishing the day up. There's 29 trades, only two, where is it? two trades why it says seven i must have had some intranet stuff going on but bottom line two out of seven are bad and i'm still finishing positive so i don't want you to be completely attached to that what this sheet doesn't show you is how did you play risk to reward ratio space and runners plus size that are okay to your account to return the situation. If I have a $8,000 account and the max I can trade 
is 5 MES. And I go here and most of my loss are one, two MES. And then I finally press five MES from support to resistance with a good risk ratio. I'm going to offset the losses from here. Even, even if it's seven losses versus two wins. Powerful everybody, yes or no? Tell me you start waking up and smelling the coffee because this is this is everything. This is how professional traders turn, turn, turn bad bad trades, bad day, bad months, bad weeks. Yeah. Okay. Let's go now. This one. Well, it's another one. It's the same same concept. Three to one risk ratio. See, I'm pretty consistent. Where is it? Yeah. I'm making 830 on my winner. I'm making $200 in my loser. It's a four to one risk ratio. So it's not really the risk ratio, but it's the average. I win four times more than I lose, right? Even though I lost four, I made four trades, nine shitty ones. Why? Because the shitty ones, well, I must have had size because I was down $2,000 at one point. Even I wonder if it's a three. I cannot really see what it says here. Uh, no, it says 500. So I was down 2003, 2001, and I was able to turn it. Do you see, guys? So even though here, again, say, do you see how stupid the email that I get from people for the past 15 years that I help traders, when a trader sends me an email say, what's your average win? What's your average loss? Do you see how stupid the question is? Yes or no? Do you see how now this is completely irrelevant to a successful trader on the risk ratio and how much money you can make to increase your net liquidation value? It's totally irrelevant. Totally irrelevant. The key is, can you press size at the right time with the right risk to reward ratio? Can you do that? Can you time that pretty good? If you can, the goals and the average win loss ratio does not matter at that point. Yeah. See, it's very, very important the levers that you are. So when you go to the trade of it account, I am not making affiliate commission. I wish we could have affiliates. I don't think they do any affiliate deals. So look, just go open a trade of the account. But I'll give you also the ugly that I think about this type of brokers compared to a TD Ameritrade and a, a Fidelity or Interactive Broker. You go there, you do not do any live trading for hmm, probably two to three months. And you start getting a feel with an account. Or you can set up your account here, your simulation account at $8,000. So set it up at realistic balance, starting balance. Does that make sense? Yes or no? Do not go and take their 50K, it's stupid. If you are only going to put 8,000 or 5,000 or 10,000, put the amount you intend of putting there and practice in the sim with the intended amount that you are going to put here. Does that make more sense to you? Yes or no? I never understand the mistake of traders that go here and use the 50K account simulator when they go back here and they only put $2,000 in their account. So they, they get the bad habit to stress an account at 50K and they go here and they blow the account in one day. Bye-bye. It's blown. Risk management, terrible. Practice, terrible. Practice the same amount that you are going to put in the account. Does that make sense, everyone? Okay. This is a huge mistake I've seen traders doing over the years. They are trying to convince themselves that they are great traders by using the 50K account. That's not how it works. Okay. When you go to the account tab, there's a thing where you can set your risk management parameter. And this is wonderful. Why is that going to be wonderful? Because this will protect you against what? 
it goes back to the first thing we talked about this morning that is very hard to control, which is the mental games. But the mental games is nothing else but what we talked about. We reduce the mental game to what? To emotional what? Emotional what? The mental game. There is a word that I've been using all morning that nobody uses in the trading industry ever. You reduce your emotional what? Correct, dopamine, which is what? Brain chemicals. Your brain chemicals. The dopamine, your endorphins, or whatever. Whatever the brain tricks are being played on you, which makes you lose any amount of discipline, the computer here will force it to you. What's your daily loss? So let's say you put your average daily loss at, let's say, 8% of your total account. So if your account is 10K, they get you out of, well, I don't like that, but let's say, what well, daily loss you say, maybe 5% to 3% of your account, right? That's your max you lose in a day. The computer gets you out, you don't. Same here, there's another thing that is even better as the max drawdown. So let's say you start at 10K and the max drawdown is 10% of your account at 9K. You're done. You're done for the week. And you know what you do here? You are going, there's another button where you are going to, to uh, uh, set it up so that it, it blocks you for the entire week. So at 10% of your account, you're done. You're done for the week. Go, go re, rebalance your chemistry. So what it does here is it forces you. And you know what? I wish that every broker in the world had something like that for stocks and options. Does that make sense, everybody? Yeah? It's, I wish every bar broker in the world had those parameters for stocks and options. Because professional trading firms where I traded, when I traded at JP Capital and over trading prop firms, right? They had parameter like this. I would blow my daily limit. I'm out. You want a funded account now with the funded firms, which most of them are scanned. They'll have daily, daily, uh, daily profit parameter and drawdown parameter. Are we clear? So, ideally, I prefer no more than a draw total down of three, two to three percent for the daily limit and for the drawdown account limit no more than five to ten percent of your account remember because then after it takes you a lot to come back it takes you more than ten percent to come back from a ten percent loss powerful so make sure also when that happens you click you have the data choose the data whatever that they need you know i'm not your puppy your papa you know, but it's very important. All right. Guys, it's 1 p.m. And I've gone four hours on this class, four hours. It was supposed to be three hour class. So here's what I'll do. I'll give you another 45 minutes next time to go a little bit more over charts, economical cycle and options. Okay. So I'll hold you this week sometimes we try to figure when is the most appropriate time, 45 minutes. But this is running close to a five hour class. But this, hopefully, there has been a lot, a lot of very powerful concepts I throw at you today that I do, that I do with real account, that you need to review and see which parts of those concepts you must implement, right? Which parts of those concepts you must implement quickly in your business plan of trading and changing things. I'm going to give you one thing before we leave today. I'm going to give you the Excel sheet and the guys who are good in the room at Excel, you are going to refine it anyway. By the way, Excel is a very, very uh, personal thing. 
you know and everybody will 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 uh adapt it to their their their, their personality their taste of colors and stuff but i think everybody in the room needs to have that spreadsheet Re reflect on that spreadsheet i will not give you the notes today i will give you the notes when we finish the 45 minutes on monday i will have zafar with the recording of today having having the notes but it's kind of silly because i have to finish my notes for you with the options so let's go one thing at a time let me figure how i'm giving the file here Let me see how I pass that along to you guys. Also, I welcome any questions of the stuff we've discussed today. Anything that pertains to what I've discussed today, everything else I'm not interested, okay? This has been a very powerful session. You know, there's a lot of things that are going to steal your brain right now. Just one thing it says there's a disk io error what does that mean do i have to close it what's the problem here? let me close it let me try again to give you the the, the file ah it went through did you guys got the file make sure you got the excel i gave you the excel spreadsheet So before we go, you go for the Excel spreadsheet, there's two things we have not discussed by the way. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go through this quickly. Do you see the Excel sheet? Give me a quick yes, no. Now the Excel sheet has been, oh, it has been sent to the host and the panel is sorry. It's been sent to the wrong people. Wow, now I have it open again. <laughs> ah, Mark, thank God I'm patient sometimes. Okay, now you should have the shit. Tell me if you got it. I just gave it to you, Gottman. This is an Excel sheet. This is this is important. So focus, everybody. Do you see the Excel sheet? I need to move on, guys. So we discussed the matrix today, the mental game on how to use the spreadsheet with the alt, the hungry, angry, lonely, tired strategies, which strategy to choose, futures, options, stocks, date risk reward the size the numbers of trends the numbers of win the losses the win the loss the pnl and explaining your mental frame and the mistakes and the stuff that you've done in your notes that's like your trading journal next you have your drawdown meaning what let's say you start with like i said with a ten thousand dollar capital and your drawdown should be no more than ten percent per day that's what you said in your trade of eight. So your drawdown, your max drawdown should be 9,000. At 9,000, you are out of the game. Drawdown, this is spelled bad. I don't like to spell like a terrorist. So here, see, now your max is at 9,000. So every day you write it, you start your day on Monday, 10K. Next day, what's your net liquidation value? uh 95 95 you go you made a thousand ten five ten five you go down you go ten by the way when you have a drawdown of ten percent your ten five is going to start you the next day at what what's your drawdown so let's say you lose you lose 500 here. Let's do it again. This is not like this. You lose 
500. If you lose that $500, the maximum you can lose is still 9,000. You still have not reached your drawdown on trade of it, right? But here's what happened. Let's say the next day you make $2,000 in profit. You are 12,000. What's your new drawdown amount? Everybody, I go from 10,000 to 12,000. My max drawdown is, is 10%. So this is your capital start and you want your daily drawdown max. So look here, I go to 12,000 here. This equal, this equal this one times 90%, one nine. This is your new drawdown, 10 a. You got it now, everybody? Yes or no? So everybody, every day, put your daily start drawdown so that you readjust your drawdown in your mind, your, 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 your calculation, because this drawdown is going to be the stopping point in which you take a few days, you break, and you don't blow up your account. Remember, you slow down. That drawdown and that daily loss on trade away will control you to go take a break, rebalance your chemicals, and that's it. Consistency. Um, this is something a lot that the prop firms does, the uh, funded traders do. Essentially, it works like this. It says that any given days, you are not consistent until most of your trading profit on any given day is less than 30%. So look here. I make a thousand, I make two thousand, I lose a thousand, I make uh, three hundred, and you keep on going like this. Then you lose five hundred, then you make five hundred, then you lose, uh, you make uh, I don't know, a uh, thousand again, uh, five hundred, uh, two hundred. So look at what it does. If you look here, and that's how the prop firms will judge you. So what I try to strive to do for my own accounts, and 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 I, you know, there's there's nothing wrong with having funded account if you find reputable people because most of them are scammers. And I will I might refer you one or two this year to go to, but most of them I generally speaking think it's a simulator game. And if you have the money, you're better off trading for yourself. But look, what it does here, it says, okay, in any given day, this PNL represents what? Out of my total PNL. So as you accumulate the PNL from part 22, the first day, this is 100%. And it goes down, it goes down, it goes down. Your total PNL is 63.22. And it tells you how many days do you have that are inconsistent days, which means you are above or below the 30, usually it's above the 30% profit of the overall total. So if you look here, I have one day that is inconsistent here and one day that's inconsistent here. Why? Because they are abnormal to my type of trading. They are above the mean. And what it tells a prop trader firm is that you have not, usually they want to see, I think 14 days or 20 days of consistent trading so that you know, because they could say, okay, you, you join our program, we'll fund you if you make $2,000, but what happens if you do $2,000 in day one? Does that shows that you are a consistent trader, yes or no? Hurry up. Does it show that you're a consistent trader? Yes or no? No. But if most of your trade in a period of 15 to 20 days shows that most of your trades are late, you don't have inconsistent days where most of your trading profit, look, if I keep on going, I go here. Now, 2,500. Yeah. Look, now my inconsistent, my big days become below 30%. Now, because now it says, oh, okay, this guy is a good trader. 
I mean, if I go here, boom, 31 to some, maybe let's say I make 3,000. Okay, now I made, I lose minus 1,800. It simplified everything. So look now. I have no inconsistent day. Bingo. I made $10,000 profit, zero inconsistent day. There is about 18 days, or no, from five to five to 19, uh, prove myself 14 times, let's say, 15 days, boom. They take me in the funded trading account program because I've proven that I am the type of trader with my losses and my win that is consistent. No day, no one day represent more than 30% of my total profit. Interesting, everybody? Yes or no? So that shit, what it does is forces you to be a consistent trader. It will prove you in a period of 45 days, 60 days, 90 days, whether you take your numbers from your SIM account or from your real account, if you are a consistent trader or not. Because you can dream all you want to be a consistent uh, trading again, trader. But if in a period of 10 days, you have one day that is 50% of your entire profit, you are not a consistent trader. You just, go, you just got a great day. It doesn't mean you are a consistent trader. Interesting, everybody? Powerful? Yes or no? Uh-huh. Look, I love you all, everybody. I know that if I had had that uh, type of knowledge or whatever fees you paid, I'm telling you, I wish I had had that type of knowledge when I was in this business, because this is the very, very powerful foundations to trade and start the business of trading. And most traders, they spend countless hours of learning thought formation, chart formation, candlestick pattern, and all types of crops that are meaningless to this business. And I think this is an important must. Watch, rewatch, rewatch to stay in this business, you know? I love you all, everybody. Stay safe, and I'll see you uh, Monday, everyone. And we'll, we'll try, I will try to make it fair on the last segment, talk a little bit about option delta, as I promised that, and I always, stick to my promises next week at one point i'll try to do 30 minutes 45 minutes talking about options and delta okay you take care everybody stay safe